Greetings, Culture Warriors. This is Jeffrey Error, author of Culture is Everything, and your host for this latest Dispatch from the Front. Got another New York Times story today, so I will put out my high dudgeon uh, flag. So if you are triggered by high dudgeon, it would be a good time to maybe step back, have a sip of your favorite non-alcoholic beverage, and maybe take a few deep breaths, maybe practice a little yoga before we get into today's story. But I suspect I'm not going to be the only one that has a little high dudgeon about it. So bear with me for a moment here. Hospitals got bailouts and furloughed thousands while paying CEO millions. This is a story by Jessica Silver Greenberg, Jesse Drucker, and David Enrich. An inappropriate name. HCA Healthcare is one of the world's wealthiest hospital chains. It earned more than $7 billion in profits over the past two years. It is worth $36 billion. It paid its chief executive $26 million in 2019. But as the coronavirus swept the country, employees at HCA repeatedly complained that the company was not providing adequate protective gear to nurses, medical technicians, and cleaning staff. Last month, HCA executives warned that they would lay off thousands of nurses if they didn't agree to wage freezes and other concessions. A few weeks later, I'm sorry, a few weeks earlier, HCA had received about $1 billion in bailout funds from the federal government, part of an effort to stabilize hospitals during the pandemic. HCA is among a long list of deep-pocketed health care companies that have received billions of dollars in taxpayer funds but are laying off or cutting the pay of thousands of doctors, nurses, and paid workers. Many have continued to pay their top executives millions, although some executives have taken modest pay cuts. All right. As is the case with the New York Times, I only such I can bear in reading their articles. This is a lengthy one. It goes on quite a while, but that was enough to give you an idea of what they're talking about. And so please check out the link on the podcast site if you want to read the whole thing. If you're a sane person and don't want to read the whole thing, I will continue. At the outset of the lockdown, one of the stupid, stupid, stupid things that we did here in the United States of America was we decided to shut down hospitals in effect for anything but coronavirus. Now, when we did this, you would think we would have had the brains to say, hey, I need all hands on decks, doctors, nurses, I don't care what your specialty is, we're going to set it up so that you can help us with these enormous quantities of coronavirus patients we're going to have. And then that way, when they didn't materialize, we could very easily have simply redirected those resources back to what they were doing normally. But we didn't do that. What we did was we created a bunch of very expensive temporary hospitals that never got used. So we wasted a lot of money on that. We flooded the country with ventilators only to figure out that being put on a ventilator for coronavirus was pretty much a death sentence. And that it was better treated by giving patients oxygen. You don't need a ventilator for that. So we wound up with all these ventilators wrapped up, taking up space in hospitals and not used. The longer the lockdown went on, the hospitals started to get into financial trouble. Because they were expecting to get this gold rush of coronavirus care that never happened. And they shut down all the other services that bring money into the hospital. So what happened? Do you think we were smart enough to say, hey, doesn't make any sense. Let's get people back to health care and get going. No, it didn't. 
the Democrats doubled down and extended lockdowns. And so as a result of this, hospitals became worse and worse. They had to take measures like furloughing or laying off hospital employees. So now you have a healthcare crisis and a good chunk of your healthcare workers drawing unemployment. And as expected, once the bailout started for the hospitals, because the alternative was the hospitals going under and having no healthcare capacity at that point. Well, now the New York Times gets snooty about the compensation of the people running the hospitals. Now, the fact of the matter is, is that the people running the hospitals didn't get to make a lot of decisions because the politicians decided they were the experts. The fact is, is that those people had to deal with all of the change that came about as they tried to shift gears to coronavirus care centers, effectively. Which was, no doubt, a lot of extra work. They had to do this while dealing with a disproportionate amount of fear of contracting the virus themselves. But the New York Times which along with its brothers in the media have continually botched the story here. The New York Times, which has spread more misinformation and as a result gotten more people's livelihoods destroyed and lives taken away from them in the process, while the New York Times is worried about somebody else getting a bonus. The New York Times, which has done nothing whatsoever but hurt this country throughout this whole pandemic, the New York Times is worried that those hospital administrators are overpaid. You see, the New York Times values people being paid appropriately for what they do, in which case I would suggest that the New York Times ought to start sending in their paychecks uncashed. With regard to the hospitals, why would you give bonuses when the hospital is going through a financial crisis as it is? Well, you give bonuses because you want to keep people. They probably did not receive anywhere near what their target bonus was for normal times. That's the usual course of these things. But what they were trying to do is to avoid losing their top leadership at a time when they needed some stability somewhere. And not incidentally, if the whole thing went belly up, You need somebody to take the fall. And it's hard to find people willing to sign up their careers to do that without some form of compensation. It's not generally a charity. What's interesting here is that the New York Times makes every effort to make the hospitals... The people who, by the way, for the past several months of the pandemic, we've been told repeatedly by the New York Times and others are heroes. The New York Times is now targeting the hospitals for spending too much money on those heroes. The New York Times takes exception to the fact that the hospital focus resources on coronavirus, which the New York Times told them to do. But when that turned out to be a very stupid economic and healthcare resource decision, 
The New York Times doesn't raise their hand and say, whoops, we got it wrong. What the heck do we know? Nobody should listen to us. They criticize the hospital. You'll see similar attacks as they try and sift around before the election for who must be blamed. But if you can find anyone in this whole mess who is more at fault, who is stupider, more ignorant, more wicked than the media and the politicians they serve, well, good luck to you. Because you've got a future in Las Vegas. If the New York Times allows you to go to Las Vegas. Instead, what we probably ought to value, aside from the truth, it would be nice if the New York Times would value the truth at some point. Aside from the truth, we should probably value the ability of hospitals to make some calls here. The government came down with its heavy hand on these facilities and told them what they had to do. That was not the hospital's call. The hospital could have found a way to keep ordinary health care going this whole time and saved God knows how many lives in the process. They were not allowed to. And so the fact that they were bailed out is really the government admitting that they harmed those facilities with their stupid, moronic, ignorant, wicked policy decisions. And so am I going to engage in another New York Times-led two-minute hate now against the head of HCA and all the other hospital chains out there? No. No. I've seen this game before. I know what the New York Times is trying to do based on their values, and I don't share those values. So no, I won't be stared into any distaste for people trying to keep their business running in the midst of this mess, particularly people who were responding based on the information they were given by the New York Times and the government toadies who run it. Thank you, and have a great day.